Ayoan jahatan, evak idum, anyan jahat. Hakulo imanj, me estoy alegre de estar aquí con todos ustedes. John, it's my luck, and um, you know, to be alongside you, um, to be in the midst of of your work, um, your your poetry, OG poet is what we call you. Um, <laughs> And and your um, your energy and your stories and and what what I've come to know as a, a rigorous generosity, and so um, yeah, it is a lucky thing to be alongside you and also always to be uh, near Hyde and gracias to all the people who came together to uh, to begin to find ways uh, to build the capacity to receive Jean and her work and other natives and their work, and their presence, and their imaginations. I'm going to read uh, three poems, and they will have an image uh, with them. Um, oh, wait. Sorry. It looks like a, it looked like a detonator. I didn't want to touch it. <laughs> so in, in lieu of another um, land acknowledgment, uh, I think a lot about the land, about our lands and our waters, and that they're good lands and waters. And so beneath all of these buildings, beneath these Western institutions and these white nations and you know museums and schools and, and beneath the buildings, the, the land is good land. We're never far from, uh, from those things. And so this poem is toward imagining uh, pleasure and love in the midst of United States occupation. Manhattan is a Lenape word. It is summer and we must be brave. The ambulance's rows of light blooming against the window. Its single siren cry, help me. A silk red shadow unbolting like water through the orchard of her thigh. Her come in the green night, a lion. I sleep her bees with my mouth of smoke. Dip honey with my hands stung sweet on the darksome hive. Out of the eater I eat, meaning she is mine colony. The things I know aren't easy. I'm the only Native American on the eighth floor of this hotel or any, looking out any window of a turn of the century building in Manhattan. Manhattan is a Lenape word. Even a watch must be wound. How can a century or a heart turn if nobody asks, where have all the natives gone? If you are where you are, then where are those who are not here? Not here. Which is why in this city I have many lovers. All my loves are reparations loves. What is loneliness if not unimaginable light and measured in lumens? An electric bill which must be paid. A taxi cab floating across three lanes with its lamp lit gold in wanting. At 2 a.m. everyone in New York City is empty and asking for someone. Again, the siren, same wide note, help me, meaning I have a gift and it is my body, made two-handed of gods and bronze. She says, you make me feel like lightning. I say, I don't ever want to make you feel that white. It's too late. I can't stop seeing her bones. I'm counting the carpals, metacarpals of her hand inside me. One bone, the lunate bone, is named for its crescent outline. Lunatus, Luna. Some nights she rises like that in me, like trouble, a slow, luminous flux. The street lamp beckons the lonely coyote wandering West 29th Street by offering its long wrist of light. The coyote answers by lifting its head and crying stars. Somewhere far from New York City, an American drone finds and loves a body. The radiant nectar it seeks through great darkness, makes a candle hour of it, and burns gently along it like American touch and unbearable heat. The siren song returns in me. I sing it across her throat. Am I what I love? Is this the glittering world I've been begging for? 
And this next poem, um, I'm thinking, of course, a lot about uh, Jean's, the, the humor that is, that's ours. Um, uh, and it's, it's survival, but it's beyond that, right? It's, it's, um, it's an indigenous knowledge system. Um, top 10 reasons why Indians are good at basketball. One, the same reason we are good in bed. Two, because a long time ago, creator gave us a choice. You can write like an Indian god, or you can have a jump shot sweeter than a 44-ounce can of government grape juice, one or the other. Everyone but Sherman Alexi chose the jump shot. <laughs> Three, we know how to block shots, how to stuff them down your throat, because when you say shoot, we hear howitzer and Hotchkiss and Springfield Model 1873. Four, when Indian ballers sweat, we emit a perfume of tortillas and pine saw floor cleaner that works like a potion to disorient our opponents and make them forget their plays. Five, we grew up knowing that there is no difference between a basketball court and church. Really, the Nazarenes hold church in the tribal gym on Sunday afternoons. The choir belts out in the suite by and by from the low block. Six, when Walt Whitman wrote the half-breed straps on his light boots to compete in the race, he really meant that all Indian men over age 40 have a pair of vintage Air Jordans in their closet that they believe are still magic enough to make even the largest Kamad bod able to go coast to coast and finish a layup. Seven, Indians are not afraid to try sky hooks in real games, even though no Indian has ever made a sky hook. No Indian from a federally recognized tribe, anyway. <laughs> but still, our shamelessness to attempt sky hooks and warm up strikes fear in our opponents, thus giving us a mental edge. Eight, on the court is the one place we will never be hungry. That net is an emptiness we can fill up all day long. Nine, we pretend we are playing every game for a Pendleton blanket, and the MVP gets a mash and tuck it Pequot sized per capita check. <laughs> Although inflation and stuff, I don't, that one, you know, <laughs> times have changed since I wrote that. <laughs> Ten, really though, all Indians are good at basketball because a basketball has never been just a basketball. It has always been a full moon in this terminal darkness. The one taillight in Jimmy Jack tall cans, gray granada, cutting along the back dirt road on a beer run. The creator's heart that coyote stole from the funeral pyre, cursing him to walk alone through every coral dusk. It has always been a fat gourd we sing to. The left breast of a Mojave woman, three Budweiser and a Saturday night. It will always be a slick, bright bullet we can sling from the three-point arc with five seconds left on a clock in the year 1492. And as it rips down through the net, our enemies will fall to their wounded knees with torn ACLs. And you don't have to clap. <laughs> And this last one is a newer one, but I, I wanted to read it thinking toward uh, your father's horses and thinking toward your horses. Um, and you offered us pictures of home. I think Laura had taken one as well. So this is my home. So I wanted to leave you. This is where we come from. Uh, Vikwame, Vikwame Imanvench. Alchemy horse. American, they said, but horse I dreamed and horse became. I was cleaved from human earth, red sap, lymph, calcium, atlas and femur, a new chaos come forth through the world's foaming crust, then licked into my own skin, a flesh being bearing its first dream self. I came to life how stars appear of dust, collapsed till struck to light. Dream erupted, Gila monsters, lava black, land, all its thunders. In this great magnetic field, I am a knowledge system. My hair is a tangled Mojave dictionary, and my tongue is a danger. I speak a dark whip into the Habub's gold throb. 
This valley's bright weather is my ceremony. Flash flood is my medicine. How I clean myself of self. America, hoard of property, is a debris of my cells. Limestone, womb, porous, seafloor, basalt, trilobite, camel bones, glass, and black mountain. We professional mourners, crying for our lives and for hire. From dark colonies and the caves behind our hearts, we weep the sun to fall and bats into the sky. We weep the saguaros to bloom, eastward and moon white, soft petaled wounds circling their night wrists and crowns. Grief is our lush and luxury, the strain of anything that grows. Sand rose, ironwood, smoke tree. We tend dune gardens from deadlands till the haylight beds reap selenite thorns from the horned toads' backs. In the AM heat warp, vultures ripple the violet sky dome, a swarm of blood gloved archivists. They skywrite directions to the museum, to the university, to the hospital. In this epic of citizenship, I must arrive everywhere twice, occupied and unseated. One hand, the comet. The other hand, who makes the comet come. So call me lodestone or alone. Whisper me, secret magnet. In pink twilight, my love and I are effigies, leaching salt through our terracotta hands. My language clays and maps amaranth lather along my thigh a migration of exile, a self-determined relocation of pleasure, want need. We are the origin, oxygen and always becoming, blood worms from which new land might grow. How we make soil, then mud where we laid, alchemy of our wet denim skins and gravity. We pulse animal and sensual, thundercats of love greening the desert, Pale grasses fruit in my breath, gray-green along the belly of the night branch. We are unacreable. We abrade the transit, the survey, hold tight, and repeat ourselves as crystal lattice. Come morning, come mercury light. We are blessed and scattered, shards of a horsehead water jar, lonely for a body and aching for the cool taste and shape the first water once took. This nation is a white, bright, magnesium Indian burn. I fume and illumine in its quantum arson, Indian iron alchemy horse. My brothers are the cold killers, shovelers of silver anthracite, fuel gods of the midnight train, boxcar, jump track, jolt light, vaporing night salt to cloud, mustanging. Every desert highway is sacred, and gas station pumps break our hearts. We have pedal bones, white doctors call coffin bones. That's why I'm always dying. That's why I'm always half ghost, half back, half dressed as the war party who will return with a full tank of gas and a stick of scalps. Tonight, the city is a tectonic bone radio. Our ancestors are on every channel. Scorpions whip and fluoresce from the shadows of settler houses. Green-eyed wolf spiders emerge from their dens to join the dark hunt. The midnight train monsoons around the bend, recognizes me as relation and cries, Chukshon, Chukshon, Chukshon. We are each the other's passenger. On the horizon, my warrior's volcano, I shatter cinders from my hair. I watch them eat the day aliens in flame. American Indian horse pyre. The Hohoham canals crack awake, gush their ghost waters through the settlement streets, blister and bone flower. I war whoop out into the empty, displaced hip of the ghost sea, and the ghost sea war weeps back, spiraling the etched shells of my ears. America, haunted hotel, ship rock, rock wreck, ship of fools, little giant cemetery of braids. Beloved occupiers, I am posting notice. There is no more vacancy. When this world has ended, I will carry my people home. Gracias, John.
Miigwech, Natalie. That was amazing. Buju, Hyde Erdrich, Indigenikaz, Jaganashimong, Majikwe, Indigo, Makwan Dodam, Gekabikang, Inda, Dakota King, and Duinjaba. So I'm Hyde, and I'm from Minneapolis, and I grew up in Dakota country. I'm really grateful to be here in your country, those of you who are from here, and I'm especially grateful to uh, have had the entire day and night to absorb all the amazing things everybody said. Um, I also want to say Tan Shi, which is the Métis way to say hello. I'm also Métis, and I'm also a Delorme, so hi, cuz. <laughs> Jean's my cuz. <laughs> Um, and I'll give you a few contexts for what you're looking at up there. Um, it comes from the fact that Jean seems to me a poet who is primarily known as an artist, whereas I'm a uh, artist and arts professional who is primarily known as a poet. I have a side hustle being a curator, and some of these images come from a show I'm curating, and they're there to acknowledge that uh, Jean has supported poets, has collaborated with poets across a vast amount of time um, in terms of the, the uh, ways poetry has evolved. Uh, everything from the famous image on the cover of Mad Love and War to a little booklet that the Johnson Foundation, which became Hazelden, did with Sharon Day, Sharon Day Garcia, and Pat Pag. Patagolis. Um, so those things were mine to look at in the past couple of years, and I thought of Jean right away when I wanted to work on that show. So I feel like I've been walking alongside you um, in a way. I have two books that I was going to read from, but I think I'm going to chicken out and I can't read a poem for Jim Denemy, but I want to think about him. Uh, this work, as well as all the books since my third book, have covers from Andrea Carlson, and she loaned me her work for the interiors of the books as well. So um, those artists are often uh, part of what I do in my work. I'm going to read quickly so that you all can go do the things you need to do. And I'm just going to give you a little frame uh, at the end on a poem that I have made out of the words that I've heard in the past night and day. But this one is from Little Big Bully, and if you saw the images from Andrew Carlson's work, you might recognize the cover. It uh, is a version of um, something uh, like Red Exit that is a print. I'm going to read a poem called Stone Animate. All my poems are super short, so don't get nervous. <laughs> Whether creation carved them or not, my hands are some concretion, some ton of rock washed over and over in surf until sand encases the glow of quartz. Hardness thrust up through Earth's crust to tumble a hundred million years, and here we reach each other. I reach out with hands that match this skipping stone, and I think a moment. We know each other, and though for the purposes of, purposes of art I should, I will not let you go. And I kept adjusting what I wanted to read according to what people had to say, and I heard so many dis talks and discussions and of the future and everybody touching on the future, which was so beautiful to me. And this is called the eighth fire. We talk about the seventh generation, but we're responsible beyond that. The eighth fire. Deepest skies, when finally we arrive, dark as fire mark on rock, no scorched scent, but cold as when we prod the ash, we wish for coals. Dark, into which swirls the million stars obscured these many years, 
Spiral knowledge unfurls or funnels us while white rocks reveal years before the years before the years. We speak in verbs, active as water, dark water, the well of what we know, what we always knew. Talk, waters talk. Unseen, we walk a dark path, carried along a spiral. We go forward when we're back. So I'm going to share with you to end the poem I wrote out of my listening. I started to write out of my listening. It has to do with um, a name in my family, Nenaogijigokwe, which means the woman who ordered the cosmos or who keeps track of the stars or who cares for the stars. And I thought she sounds like a map maker and she also sounds like a curator. So for Jean and for all of you. I'm not going to call her Nana Ogijikokwe in the poem, though. I'm just going to call her Sky Woman. Sky Woman stared for so long at the blank walls of her world that she opened a space, blue swirls in white, a green hump in there somewhere, turning and turning. She stared for 24 hours. Then it started over again. She called this time-based art. Then Sky Woman felt a radical urge to jump. Then, then here Sky Woman felt another urge. She called it creative. Her body agreed. Soon enough, her first work birthed because it had an audio track. She called it mixed media. <laughs> Spirits heard it calling and came. They critiqued, but they wanted to collaborate with her. And soon more births, it became a series, the creative series. After that, the gallery was invented. She called it Earth, Earth Gallery. It wasn't too big, but it would do. After that, she created and created and created all of this, all of us. And still, she goes on creating until, not the end, until another beginning, until the next beginning, she thinks. If she keeps doing this, she'll have to find some funding. So, <laughs> thank you.